It's Listener Power 90.3 FM KEXP and streaming online all over the world at KEXP.org. My name is Morgan. Thanks so much for joining me on this Saturday afternoon. I'm very excited. I am down in the live room joined by Snail Mail. Their new album, Lush, just came out earlier this month. One of our favorites of the year so far. Welcome to the KEXP studios. Thank you for having us. We'd love to have a couple songs. We would love to play some. Excellent.
Snail Mail live on KEXP, that song Heat Wave from the debut album Lush that is out now on Matador Records. They're playing tonight at the Crocodile. Definitely catch them there and pick up the new record. That song Heat Wave actually has a pretty great video. Lindsay, you're uh, playing some ice hockey. Yeah. Are you actually an ice hockey player? Yeah, I played hockey for something like eight years. That's amazing. Yeah, you were doing some sweet skating moves. I was like, is that a, is that a double or is she actually doing that? <laughs> there, was a, there was like a ton of conversation in the, in the uh, like director's room about if that looked like a stunt double. And uh, yeah, we never, we never figured out how to like <laughs> to fix that. Well, you look very skilled. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> All right, here another one. Mail live on KEXP. The new debut album is called Lush, out now on Matador. And uh, the songs sound so good. Um, so, Lindsay, this, this new debut album, Lush, it's uh, such a strong release. The songwriting is so good. It sounds like you've been writing songs for years. How long have you been making music, and how did this project come together uh, to be signed with Matador right out of high school and have this album happen? Um, I've been writing songs since I was, like, 
13 and uh I never I never really recorded anything or or like did anything um before habit I just kind of um I ended up just kind of doing that on a whim and then uh and then a couple a couple months later um we just like had some like really awesome success at shows and and, and we had some like cool tour opportunities and then um and then we decided to sign. I decided to sign with Matador. Yeah. How long have the four of you been playing together as a band? Um, Ian actually just joined us on this tour. Oh, great. But uh, Ray and Alex and I have been playing together as a trio for two years. Okay, cool. So since the, the Habit EP came out? Yeah, a, a little after band. the Habit EP. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. And um, what are your musical influences? I'd love to know what you listened to when you were growing up. Um, I, I grew up with a lot of Velvet Underground um, Really love Paramore. Um, Liz She's a good Fair. singer. Yeah. Oh my God, it's yeah. crazy. Um, Fiona Apple always. Uh, oh yeah. Well, I was gonna say Fiona Apple always, but I love the band Always. Also. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're so um, good. <laughs> uh, I love Ott a lot right now. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what I've been. I guess the question was what I grew up listening to, but I kind of just morphed it all together. No, that's yeah. cool. It's it's always uh, those influences always come together, even in present days. Yeah. Um, you grew up in the Baltimore area. Did that music scene have any influence over your musicianship? Yeah, uh, it did. I feel I started going to shows when I was like t- twelve, um, and my mom would drop me off at them or or stand in the back so as not to embarrass me. And um, I found out about like DIY and uh, and like going to local shows in, in DC and Baltimore a couple years later. Um, and then I, as soon as I could drive, I was at them like every weekend. And uh, the Baltimore scene has so many really independent, creative, uh, inspired people. And I think it, just having that in my life was really awesome. And then close by, the, the DC scene is really awesome. And there's like a, a, there are a lot of really incredible punk bands and a lot of really politically driven, awesome people. So yeah, both scenes. Rad. And you have... Um you have a really vulnerable uh, lyricism. Is that something that came naturally to you, or is that something that you had to like work at and be very pointed about? Um, I think it. I think it's something that that feels natural now, but but maybe just came from from the type of authors I, I like to read, and I think um, a lot of the music that I just gr- grew up with is very open and and honest. And I and I felt I feel like maybe Lush is a little more more on that end of the spectrum than habit because uh, after touring, I I realized that I really like kind of like opening myself up to the crowd on stage. And I realized like the more vulnerable and honest the songs feel, the more, the more I, I want to play them with conviction every night and I don't get tired, tired of doing it on tour. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. You had the opportunity to talk to uh, one of your influences, Liz Fair recently. Uh, you got to sit down and have a conversation with her for Pitchfork. How did that feel to meet her and be able to talk to her about her <laughs> journey and sort of uh, compare your musical stylings to her? It was insane. It was so. It was such a such an honor. Um, I remember I had to get up early and I was really really nervous. Um, and I just sat down across from her at this brunch restaurant in LA and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she's so nice. She was really nice and she's really like down to earth and she has a lot of really s- smart amazing things to say. Yeah. yeah. Since you're fairly new in the music industry, uh, was she able to give you any advice that you've sort of taken to heart in the last year or so? Yeah. I think my favorite piece of Liz Fair advice that I got on that day um, is that she told me to buy like a tiny input headphones amplifier um, where so that I could write on the road. Um, and she basically said that if you write something every day writing your next record feels less daunting and as Mm. simple as that seems that I really took a lot away from that and I feel like I've been making some effort to write in in some format every single day and and that's that's a really big thing that's awesome yeah do you feel like you have a a new album sort of coming out of those new songs or are you, Um, you waiting on that I can feel I can feel a new album forming but I, I I'm nowhere near awesome uh, yeah well we love this current album we'd love to hear a couple more songs from it cool it's snail mail live on kexp
Snail Mail Live on KEXP. That was Pristine from the new album Lush. That song is stuck in my head all the time. Such a good song. They are playing tonight at the Crocodile. Got one more song for us. One more, sorry. All good. How much longer on the tour do you have? I don't know. This is like the this is the longest tour of all time. <laughs> I think we're a third of the way. Th- I think it's 50, 56 days. Wow. And I think we're maybe a third of the way through it. Yeah. How <laughs> how is that feeling? That's a, a new thing for you, right? Yeah. It's uh, it's awesome. I'm I'm usually really really excited about it. Some days I I feel like trapped in the van. Yeah. Like sure. I'm like claustrophobic. <laughs> Does it feel um, like Groundhog's Day sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we get to see some like really beautiful places and like go to the beach and eat, eat, and eat ice cream. So that's it's not all wonderful. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Snail Mail Live on KEXP. Thank you so much for coming today. That was awesome. Thank you so much for having us. Playing tonight at the Crocodile. The new album is Lush. Go pick it up. You won't be sorry. And they're heading up to Vancouver tomorrow. Have an amazing tour. I hope you get lots of beaches and ice creams. Thank you. (laughs) And keep it tuned right here to the station where the music matters. 90.3 FM, KEXP, Seattle. Discover new music at listener-powered kexp.org.